G'day, how you going? Indianapolis here, your acrylic guru. Welcome to my video channel where I like to teach beginners and advanced beginners how to paint beautiful, wonderful paintings. I want to get the size on the canvas before we get started and I'll also get the colours going up the screen that I'm going to use in this video. Now this video is a water scene type of thing. It's going to have some light elements in the sky reflecting in the water and it's going to have different visuals in the water that I want you beginners to learn and start incorporating into your projects, okay? So let's get on over here and I'll show you what we're doing. So I've got my canvas laid on a landscape. Now my horizon line is a bit around the halfway mark, okay? Now the subjects I'm using in this painting, you can do the same or your subjects, your mid-ground, your water, your sky, whatever. Now I want a, a distant row of land out here and here. This one here, see your horizon line? I want this one just a little bit lower, just to create realism. And we can probably have a background mountain. I might add that in there, I might not. Now I've got a light element up here and I want to have that reflecting in the water. Now the water is going to I want to make this water look like it's coming at you and have the lighter values and the darker values splicing into each other. I want you to start putting these values in the water instead of just one color and knife marks everywhere. I want you to start doing these values to evolve within your art journey. Now down on the palette, I have some titanium white. It's a soft body paint and I've just got some retarder. This retarder is going to slow down the drying time of that paint because acrylics dry very quick depending on your climate. So I want to get this mixed in with the putter on a brush. Now this putter on a brush is fantastic. It's big, it's broad, it don't muck around, it gets things done. So we can do the whole lot and try and rush and keep up with the paint drying, but I'm just going to do the top half first. So I want to just get this onto the sky half of the painting, pretty much down to the horizon line or where those trees are going to be. Now that's all I need to do. Now what I'm doing is simply crisscrossing it, getting it on there. I don't care how thick and gluggy and bumpy and rough it looks. I'm getting it all into the tube of the canvas. It's everywhere. Now what I'm going to do is simply come to the tip of me putter on a brush and stroke it left and right. I'll come a bit lower than the horizon line. Just Now I'm stroking it left and right like a pure gentleman just to get it nice even thin coat. You don't want this too thick. Now do your warm or cool sky. I'm going for a bit of a mixture. So I want to grab a little bit of Indian yellow first, just to have a bit in the bottom corner there. I want this over this corner here, just vibing. So it's going to be there and just scooting across there. So that's the main yellow bit of the sky, but it's not going to be real heavy yellow. Okay, I'm just going to simply wipe that brush solid strong colour. I'm going to pick up some of this craft white that hasn't got the retarder in it and just lighten that up so that I can get a, a violet colour and the colour on the canvas is going to lighten it as well. There we go. Now over this side I want to crisscross it on. Beautiful. Crisscross it on. Crisscross it on. Up to the height you want and now I want to bleed that into the yellow. And I'll get that all over here so I'm not getting any contaminations there. That's okay. Pull some across that because I want some right across there. There we go. There, I'm getting some long strokes into that yellow. Beautiful, that's it. Now I've got some cobalt blue here. Normally I have cerulean blue for my sky colour, but I'm going to use that in the water. So I want to go cobalt for the sky colour blue in this one. And I want this part of the blue darker than over here. So I want to get this all over here. I'm, see what I'm doing? I'm getting it off my brush over here. Okay. Getting it off the brush over here. And now I'm going to go across the canvas. There we go. And I will pick up some white just to glare this right hand side of the sky up a bit if I feel it needs to be a little bit more lighter and brighter. Now what I'm doing, I'm just using this brush and simply pushing the paint where I want it to be until I'm happy with the visuals and it looks pleasing to my eye. 
now my sky's wet. I just want to put some light clouds here because over here I want the light source and I don't want to destroy that. So actually what I might do is put that in first. So I'll grab a smaller fan brush. Now we all have a fan brush or something appropriately. I want to use this and incorporate the glare of the sun in the sky, okay? Before I put the cloud. So my reflection's about here. So I want him about here. So I want to get that quite dark. Now this paintbrush isn't quite doing the trick for me. I'm just picking up a flat filbert now, a soft filbert, and I want to get that pushed into the sky. And what I want to do is, there we go, get that pushed around. So it's just sitting in the sky, not so cartoony with a sharp edge, okay? Have a small blending brush and blend the edges of this into the object. Now see the edges? I want to sink them into the sky. I can sink the whole lot down and come back with some more white to really intensify. That's the right side. I'm so easy doing the right side because I'm right handed and the camera's on my left. Now I've got to go to the other side. And I'm just pushing that into the sky there. And we're going to have an intense glare in our sky. Now I wanted this in before I do the cloud behaviour so, because this is sitting behind the clouds. Now I'm grabbing some more white paint and I just want to intensify the very middle of that now. Just dance it on, touch it, feel your canvas with your brush and control where you put that paint. And I think I'll just leave it like that. Now picking up the titanium white from the tube it's a bit thicker than that softer bodied stuff i used in the beginning and i want to just get some clouds fluffing in the sky but nothing too heavy now see where the blue is connecting to this color we're going to camouflage that we're going to get some clouds running up into the sky here just like so so what i'm doing is i'm making a line of my cloud there different type of clouds these are not big fluffy cumulus clouds they're just these kind of ones like this. I'll stop there because the paint's running out and I'm going to dance the top. Just sit it down but I want to keep the top there. Okay. Grab yourself a kitchen towel, a cloth, something and now I want to blend the bottom of this into that violety colour there if I can. Okay, bring it down a little bit more and then push it through. And we're just blending this come across there and we're gradually building our clouds in the sky. Now I want to get something just in front of that. Watch this. Something hard. There we go. Scooping. So we're acting like we've got some beautiful, lovely stuff. Now some seriously stuff just sweeping. Try not to get too much contaminated stuff there. There we go. That's okay. These are just sweeping cirrus type of clouds. I'll show you what I mean by that if you're not sure what I mean. Pick up your blending brush again and your rag. Now, the edges, we're just softening the edges down. I'll leave that there, just like that, getting rid of the hard edges. That one I put under the top cloud. I want to keep the top half of that though and just bring the bottom down so it's sitting the back one back a bit further, hopefully. Sometimes as you're painting your clouds, they're making up their own shapes. You can't control it. And when they make up their own shapes and you see something you like, just leave the darn thing alone. Now we're going to sear this up like the top and bottom half, it's just all soft. All soft, getting rid of the hard edges there. You just got movement. I'll get, I don't like that a bit too much there. Now look at it, analyse it, are you happy? I can see I want a bit of glare over here, some more, so I'll put a bit of glary stuff that can be glared up here. I'm just stamping the white stuff into that yellow and I want to glare that up, so I've simply pushed it on there. And I'm going to sit that down into the sky now and it's just going to act like a glary area. You'll see after I've blended it. Nothing too fluffy and cartoony in this one. And this bit here, we'll just put some cirrus cloud here, which is the real soft stuff. There we go. It looks thick and blobby, but the brush is going to sit it down and turn it into glary, bright, cirrusy cloud. Good gap filling clouds, these ones. 
you can do that. Practice this procedure if you haven't done it before, before you try doing it into a painting, and you can do it. Just before I finish, I want to get a bit of a reflection of this yellow just in here a little bit. So I'm going to just, I'll try it. I'm not sure which way I'm going to try it. So what I'm going to do is just put the yellow on and then cover it with white after I put the yellow on. So I want some of this just glaring about here. I'm just sitting it on this warm colour coming through. There we go. Just gently sitting that down, just getting the bumps out of it, just gently, barely touched it. Now I'm gonna grab some white, again, some titanium white on the fan brush, same brush I use for that color. And now let's get that our yellowy color. This is going to make it the yellow we want. Here we go, look. I'm just putting it there and I'm gonna blend that down. Now I'm just quickly analyze it. I can see you like a camel hump there. I don't want that. I want things swooping in. So as I'm blending, I want to try and distort that camel hump vibe that's going on there. And here we go. We've got some beautiful yellow glare there. So I'm going to make that this way now. And hopefully that camel hump is gone. I'm just calling it a camel hump. There we go. We've got some yellow on the brush there. I'll stab it up there. And that's it. You analyze your work and see where you want to go with it. I can keep going with this sky so much until the cows come home but I've got plenty of cows in the top paddock I'll stop with the sky and get on to the next bit of the painting. Now this sky may be a bit daunting for some people you don't have to go to this extent just do your sky but make sure you put your glary element here to have reflection in the water your sky my sky cool sky or a warm sky. So to do the bottom half I want to grab some of this craft white it might have a little bit of the retarded paint mixed with it, doesn't matter. So where's my horizon line about here? I'll just get all this on. Just do what I did at the top, block it on. Now I'm gonna stroke it left and right and get it to a nice, thin, even film. There we go. Now we've simply got a reflection of the sky colours in the water. But like I said, this blue, I've used cobalt up here. I'm going to use cerulean blue down here and I'll get this happening in the water. So I'm going to grab some of the Indian yellow. I'll put a little bit of this in there, just a little bit. And I want to glare it up a bit. Get a bit more of that in there. There's not enough. There we go. Just getting that sort of ready brown, warm colour to it. So I'm going to simply get this all the way across there, about there, just to that height. I'm not worried about the join, like I said. Probably about there. Now I'm going to get a bit of the quadacrinone and just stamp in. See here, I'm going to just put it on where I want it like this, this is the best way to control it, I feel. But this has got to be a lot lighter. I'm, I feel I'm going, it might be going a bit dark, but let's see how we go. Whoa, I'm gonna wipe that off the brush, because I've got too much bulk on there. Just wiping it'll be fine. And I want to get that vibing in the water. Perfect, perfect. Now I want to glare it a lot more than that. I'm picking up some of that leftover craft paint. This is still wet and I'm going to lighten it. Look at this. Just lighten it down a lot more. Take your time to learn this stuff and pick it up in your art journey. There we go. So you can see the difference between the cerulean blue and the cobalt blue. We'll get this one onto that paint now. Starting from the bottom, keeping it blue before you contaminate it. Now this blue, if anything, I want it to sort of come up, okay? That's just what's in my mind. I got it there. I do want the bottom a lot darker down here as well later on. Now I want to get this, there we go. Now I'm going to try and use this brush to get the, I'll even pick up some of that other blue. There we go. That's some of that cerulean, the cobalt blue. Just to get it, there we go, a bit darker down the bottom. 
Now, see where that blue's meeting that water? It's a bit of a hard line there. You don't want that. We're gonna, I call it splicing. That's just what I like to call it. I'm gonna get the tip of this brush just to break the hard edge off. There we go. And I wanna splice that now into that color. This color and that color are gonna to splice together. So the best thing for that is a good flat. I'm gonna use something like this. And we'll get the, the blue. Now we probably could dry it. Let's see how we go. We're going to Swervy, swervy curvies like this. Yeah, I wanna, I'll, I do wanna dry it. Now these lines I'm putting on, see your horizon line? It's that way. These lines, you can have them anywhere you want, but that way as well, not this way or that way. I call that keeping it in cahoots with the horizon line. So now I've dried that, you'll see the difference how it's laying on. Now hang on a minute, that's a bit darker than there, so I'm just gonna lighten it up with a bit more white to get it the same value as that blue that I'm doing. And we'll get this, there we go, it's a bit better. Now we're simply, nice little thin ribbons coming back into this blue here. And we're simply going to do those swell shadowy marks within our water. Keeping it straight, let them crisscross like that. Come into this blue here. Takes time, but your art deserves to have a lot of time spent into it because it's gonna last a hell of a long time, a lot longer than you. It's gonna outlive you, your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren and decades and centuries beyond. So it deserves to have that time and effort put into it. Now see here, I've done this, but you don't want it to all the same thickness. You want some, I'll just show you what I mean. Like, I'll get a bit of a thicker bit there. There we go, just like that, break it up a bit. I just, why I did that, I just analyzed it and saw what's happening. It's important to analyze your work. This color is splicing into this water and this water is splicing into that lighter color of the water, okay? Now what I'm doing, I'm grabbing some of this other color. I've tested it up here to make sure it's a reasonably same value. And I want to gingerly, let's get your brush chiseled the way you want and gingerly get some of this stuff. Splicing through here. Not too much. Every now and then you might just have a one there getting away from it all. In between all that. There we go. You can do that. I don't want it too dark. I'm just grabbing a bit of that um, Cridacridone Violet just here, just to get some of that reflection of that vibe. There we go, in the, where are we, come around here. I just want probably a, a band of it around here somewhere, just so it's not just blue and that color. You're sort of putting realistic vibes there. I don't want to muck with it too much. I'm grabbing some of the cerulean blue now with the white in it, because probably here, where are we? Let's test it on the tape. Yeah, that's a lighter value. I want to get, there we go, just some kind of lighter value here. Now we'll get some of this lighter stuff as well, and just, Before I do the mid-ground, this sunlight, I want to get that in the water. So I'm going to grab the white and some of this, see the Indian yellow, how I mixed it with this quadacridone magenta. We're getting that kind of a salmony colour, if I can get some air happening. There we go. And now pinch some of that white and then start, there we go here. Get a bit more white. 
and I've got that to add to this if I need it. Now see here when it comes straight there, straight from the horizon line, I'll, I'll dance on my line here first in this colour. I'm going to come down just dancing, look at that, boom, 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 and I can see, alright, it needs to be a little bit brighter, tinted up with some more white in that colour, so I'm just adding more white, and I'm going to go again, keep it nice and straight. Where's the thickness of my, there we go, I'm going to go about the thickness of my sun up there, like this, just get it down. I'm pressing lightly, it doesn't have to be a big thick solid white band of paint, there we go. Now I'm going to simply wipe the brush, tease that now, just tease the ends of it before it dries, tease it, we're going to add more, but this bit here, tease it, but keeping it straight, there we go, tease it. Oh, now have a look, see the gaps here, we want some of it in there, and if anything it's going to slowly display out a little bit wider as we come down with some glistening on these little swirls of water here. Now we can start adding a bit more detail to that, a bit more brighter whiter. I'll get it, you might need a smaller brush. Now back down to our blue, I've got the blue here, just a bit in there, not too much, and now mix up some white. So. There's me line, there's me straightness. I'll put a dot here off the painting. That's my point where I want to go to. And now we're going to grab this in the blue colour now and just kind of open it up here and there. Have a gap if you want. Bits shining right across here. Closer you come down, it's going to be more um, distorted and spaded out into not a solid line like it is up there. And if you, I can easily grab and the, the blue colour if I feel I've put too much of this in one area. And then I'm going to simply grab some more white, getting it more whiter and fixing this up, making it look really lovely. So back to this colour, I've just added more white to this colour here, and we'll get a bit more crispingness happening out there, leaving some gaps in it so you can see that mid-tone colour. Don't lose your straight line. I mean, it's a crooked from top to bottom, but it's still, the whole core of it is quite straight if you can know what I mean. Now when we come to these ripples, it's important to bring some of this reflecting out onto there to show the high and low bits in that water, just here and there. I've just swapped over to me dagger brush because see I can get more controlled marks of paint the way I want them to look with this brush. Different brushes as you know give different um, stroke marks and when you know which ones are going to work for you, it's fantastic. Now back down here, glistening on top of that. Nice and sharp and fine. The more pride you put into the work, you'll be so pleased with your art progress and it just encourages you yourself to do better work. The best inspiration you can get for your artwork and your art journey is yourself looking at your own work where you've studied and practiced and you're just doing beautiful work because you put the time and effort into it and that encourages you to do even more and go even further in what you can do with your paintings. This comes straight up now I want to bring this a bit more here see how we can see I'm sort of wandering because my camera's on an angle as well so I've got to try and bring it here that's why I say analyze so this little dagger brush is working good for me. Just a bit on there, a bit out there. Just knowing where they break up. I've seen pictures and every time I see this glistening on the water I like 
God, I really want to paint that a lot better than what I can, so I'm still learning as well. Now, just to finish that off, I'm just going to use the pure white. And what I want you to know is once you've done it, see, you can grab this blue color and then open up some if you feel you've done too much of this glary, glittery, shimmering stuff, okay? So I want to get it mainly here. Just pure white. Have it wet enough so it's going to transfer. If it's too thick, you'll find it hard to come off your brush. So I can get some beautiful lines here, some sparkly. I mean, I could flick this with my toothbrush as I do, but this is just something different. And what you can do, see like I put a lot there, do that. It's really adding some shine into it. Not, don't, don't do too many, just sort of govern what you feel it may need. Is that working? Yeah, it's just adding some, I can do a bit here, just a little, up and down mark on it very gingerly. I mean, it might look like, why do you bother, Ian? I can barely see what you're doing. I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but I can see what I'm doing, and it's just adding that extra flavour of bullshit to your art that a beginner can do. I want to put the mid-ground in. The best way to get a straight line here, don't forget this one's going to be on the horizon and that one will be a bit lower. So I want to use a flat brush and simply pick up the paint you're going to use. Now I'm using perylene green, it's just a dark green here and I'm probably, once this is on, if there's any see-throughy bits, I'll have to add a little bit of black just to solid it up. And once you grab this, get it inky enough so it's going to transfer. Not too inky though, judge the amount of inkiness you need. Grab your bullshit stick and get it to where you want your line. I want my line about there. Now I'm gonna rest this on there and simply drag a straight line, but get this level first to where you want your thing to sit. And I want this about a bit beyond there. So I'll just get a straight line now, right across there, pushing the brush so easy with your bullshit stick. And why do I call it a bullshit stick? Because see how straight I got that line? People will go, bullshit. Now, see how it's grinding into that paint, making it lighter? I've got to dry it. I'll simply just put the other one in as well while I've got my bullshit stick. So I want the other one about, from about, let's say, here. Nice straight line. Now I'm going to simply use my filbert brush to get the tops of that all shaped in. I like using a filbert because they're curved round and look like a simple but effective row of trees you can do. So I'm going to fix the edge of that up and get this up here. I'll stamp it in first and then I can detail it because this has got to be quite dark. Now the smaller you can have this, don't want a big one up here because you're just going to ruin the perspective of your painting. Look how small this is, how thin it is, but also how good it makes the painting. It's not overkill, okay? As I'm coming to the edge, I can probably come a little bit higher. I'll solid all that in between in. I'll get all that thicker later. I just want to get it on there for the camera's sake. There we go. And I'm simply going to do the same on the other side. This one just needs to be, so see there's the water line that I've got there, so I want to come a bit above that. And bring this one all the way out to there and finish there. And then the same, we'll just block all this in to that bullshit line we put there. See, it's still a little bit damp because I've got a lot of that soft craft paint underneath it. So now I've got that in there. You know what I'm doing. I'm going to dry this so as I can get the other paint sitting on top. Now see this colour here that I've just put on. I'm going to grab a flat brush and I want you to see these reflections, the glare that I put here. Using the same paint, it doesn't have to be too inky. You want the flat brush so you can keep a flat line and just the minutest scratch downs happening. Grab your bullshit stick again. 
You can even dry your work, have a cup of tea, have some sandwiches and come back when it's fully dry. Put a bit of mask and tape there for this line because what you need for this procedure, you want a gap, just a light one between that those trees, okay? And then, come down a bit, and then I want to very gingerly, don't go above that tight line, just pull it down like so. And then slowly to that point fade away. It's thicker on the edge. See, I'm tapping that on there, now it's even lighter. Right out to the end of this point. And then I want to come down, get a bit heavy handed here. Don't go above. Keep your watercolours, because if, if I was to have an accident and go above that line, well then I can grab that watercolour and block it back in. Now I want to do the same over here. So we're just going to probably do, let's go from about here, nice a bit closer. Come off the painting, come across. Come across, now what I'm doing is fading away, there we go. Now from here we're going to go down. Nice and straight. Now see here, I'm not, I want that to fade. So here I put the line like this. Here I'm just gonna fade it like this. And it allows it to be a gradual fading away from it. Okay. Very light, but straight. Grab some of that on the brush now and simply do some scallops. Come in back into here to continue them out so they look believable. Now I'm just finishing the same over here with some scallops on this reflection. Okay, I've got some of this colour here. I've added a little bit of white with it and we just want to get some glare in there. Actually, you probably could have, would have, should have done this before we put that darker one on. So that's why it's always a good idea to watch my videos. But then again, if you went beyond that point, you can use this, like there I had a little bit, you cut it down. And this glare in the right spot, this is not white, this glare in the, white, in the right spot just helps your painting. You get bands of glare I've noticed on lakes and things like this. Don't have it too, oh, don't have it too dark, too bright, too loud, if you can help it. A little bit in here, just coming out, boom. Now that perylene green, I've got some of this Indian yellow over here. Let's just grab a separate pile and get some of this a bit more yellow. And let's say, see here where our sun is. If we want, just for the artistic sake, get some of this. Oh, the sun's pretty high, so you can probably do this all the way across the top of this row of land trees but leave the bottom very dark go right to the top of the black and just bow all these into the center of the painting and then on the other side you'll simply start from the other side and bow them into the center of the painting as well but it's important to leave the darks there and don't do this too heavy it's just light subtle adding a bit of detail in real life you see this you see the beauty of it let's just hope the camera can pick up all this 
Now I've just changed the light on the camera, so hopefully this is a bit more seeable, visual, visible. Just looks nice, doesn't it? Bow into the middle from this side. It's just more pleasing to the eye when you're looking at the painting. Right to the top of that black. Don't leave a black edge like that. It'll look stupid and dumb. And it's just snotulating your painting when you do that. You'll realise it when you look at it. Okay, I'm going to sign this and I want to thank my YouTube members of my YouTube channel and also my patrons who support me every month. Your support is much appreciated. Now, if you want to watch the time-lapse version of this video, the link is in the description below. Okay, let's whack a frame on that and see how she looks. Yeah, that's not too shabby, is it? We've got a nice, bright, reflective light there in our landscape, waterscape painting. And believe me, I know you can do it. Well, that turned out quite all right, didn't it? I had a lot of fun doing that, and I hope you learned something along the way. Tell your friends if you like what I'm doing, but if you don't, you tell everybody. Also, check this other video out of mine. Goodbye, good luck, and good on you.